All right, folks, with the download button, the Technology Geek Podcast, the number one tech geek podcast on the EMG Radio Network. That's right, we are the number one technology podcast on the EMG Radio Network. You heard that right. I'm going to say it again. Number one tech geek podcast. Number one. And this is our 62nd show. So we got a lot going on here, and uh, we've been a while since we did a show. We've been a pad busy, for those of you that don't know. Uh, i got a book out right now uh, called The Panagram Killer. You can find it at brandonlapani.com, uh, one of my many websites that I have up on the Internet. Sometimes I think I have actually too many websites, actually. And uh, as always, here to talk about computers, the Internet, uh, geek and anything that pretty much comes to my mind here on the Technology Geek Podcast. So we got a lot going on as always. We got I got a ton of great stuff here for tech for Christmas. Uh, we're going to get into all that, but let me tell you a little bit about uh, my new endeavor. Like I said, I uh, wrote my my book just came out recently called The Panagram Killer. Uh, it stars it's about a, a detective named Serena Triton, and she actually goes ahead and uh, solving a crime. Uh, murder, and she goes into finding the person. The only thing left behind is a panogram. And for those of you that don't know what a panogram is, it is actually a well, it's a, a sentence containing all of the uh, letters in the alphabet. Uh, it's actually a Greek word of Greek descent, and uh, yes, that's what uh, that's what that is. So uh, that's exactly like I said what the Panagram Killer is. Uh, it's out now on Amazon, and uh, really is a wonderful book. I'll be doing a book signing tour as well for that, and uh, it's kind of a kind of a thing I've wanted to do for years. I've always wanted to write a book, and something I, I put out recently, and uh, really enjoyed doing it. So. Uh, that's actually out right now. Like I said, it's the Panagram Killer, and I'll put a link for it down in our show notes. Uh, some other things going on as well, folks. Oh, the Technology Geek Podcast. Uh, we actually, like I said, uh, you know, we've we got a lot of tech for Christmas, and we're going to get into all that. Uh, but a couple of things relating to podcasting before we actually go ahead and move on with the show. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, our buddies over at EMG, uh, Randy and all those guys, they've been doing a wonderful job over there on the website and uh, creating this uh, network, the EMG Podcast Network. Wonderful job those guys have done. They're very group of guys. Doesn't just show, they have probably one of the best uh, you know podcasts out there related to... Uh, you know, just uh, uh, comic books, geek, all that stuff. They're really... Uh, you know, great group of guys. Uh, you know, really enjoy hanging out with those guys. They're probably going to do a Grolix night on my, on my book and stuff like that. They're a really great group of guys. Don't forget to check out their show, uh, GrolixPodcast.com. And in the well, in the world of tech, I guess you could say we have uh, some some news coming out of the uh, Silicon Valley area. Apparently, uh, Mr. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, the guy that is uh, pretty much known. Uh, for really getting podcasting off the ground, uh, is apparently going to be uh, shutting down his production over at the Brick House, and uh, kind of kind of a shock. That he's saying, uh, I, "I watch his show quite a bit. I, I do watch some other podcasts as well." And uh, he actually is talking about that, the same that they're spending. I think it was like he said, like a tenth of his his yearly income on uh, like the, on running this, this two million dollar production. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, and I mean, one of the things that I really like about Leo is, uh, you know, he, he, I mean, he's had his his issues over the years with uh, employees and situations, stuff he's done, and um, and some of that. But I mean, you know, obviously his, his personal life, obviously, he got remarried and all that. And I think he, he gets a lot of haters, just like anybody else does on the internet. But uh, he, I remember him when he started over at the what they used to call a Twit Cottage. And then he left there and went to this $2 million studio. And the reason why he went there was because they were going to build the this network. Uh, you know, that was his goal was to build the network. And I guess it I guess it worked out for him. Uh, but I guess he's it's looking to possibly, you know, change things and, and maybe do things a little different. Like I said, you know, he 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 started this whole thing because he wanted to do. Uh, you, know, but, you know, he had a raised floor put in this place, and he had all the stuff coming in for the radio show that he does, and 
and this week in tech and you know I mean and a lot of the stuff that they talk about on that show really is you know consumer electronics kind of stuff but uh, you know he did this because he wanted to start the show and you know he I mean, he really is the the podcasting pioneer I guess you could say as far as technology goes and you know the world of podcasting this whole new media he's really the one that I really believe um, I feel that he really took the, the podcasting from from what it was, and you know, he even you know for a lot for a lot of years, a lot of people thought that podcasting was going to really be, uh, you know, a thing of the past, you know, because especially with the iPod, you have to download the podcast, get it on the device, and all that, and that was the early iPad, like the, the, the iPod, iPad, iPod Classic, and the iPod Nano, and uh, and podcasts really weren't a big thing back then, but with the the addition of the the iPhone, I mean, hooked up to the carriers now and all that, and internet uh, being available in all the cars. It really made podcasts really more of a player in the whole game of uh, being able to compete with radio and and all the other you know media platforms. So, uh, kudos to him, and he you know he you know I understand why he's moving. He's moving to I guess the old the old Broadcom facility that's uh, available in over over in I think it's down I want to say Petaluma. Uh, I guess he's moving there, and I believe that's that's where it is. I believe it's in Petaluma. It's the old Broadcom facility that used to be there, but uh, I guess he's moving there now as part of his. Uh, I guess it's a little cheaper, a little bit better. But hey, uh, you know, like I said, he really is a pioneer. But like I said, I remember him when he was at the Twit Cottage, and uh, and then he moved. So, so some other things going on, like I said, in that in the world of tech. Uh, for those of you that don't know, actually, I'm a I'm actually a fairly large supporter of Anthony Cumia. Uh, from Opie and Anthony, and he's doing a thing, and he has a podcast network now, uh, subscription based only, and he actually has like five shows now, and he's running almost a full time production, just like uh, Leo Laporte is. Uh, you know, Leo runs, I believe, like five, six shows a, a day, and uh, Anthony's doing the same thing now over at the Anthony Cumia Networks, and uh, you know, th- so those guys have really proven, especially guys like Anthony and Leo, those guys were originally on the radio. And uh, they went ahead and then branched out into podcasting, and and those guys really, I think, brought the fans to the media platform uh, for people like like me. Uh, you know, obviously, people that have a good size podcast audience, but those guys were, were really brought the people to the media to the platform of, of podcasting, and uh, then people like me kind of scooped scooped up people along the way, but. Uh, you really needed a big name people, the big name people like that to really bring uh, you know the crowd in. Uh, same thing goes for you know SiriusXM. You know, like like their media platform. You know, the, uh, the truth is they had a great platform at SiriusXM, uh, but the truth is it never really took off uh, until they brought Howard Stern. He brought the audience with him, and then it just grew from there. And the same thing goes with any media platform. Uh, you know, they'll saying build it and they will come. Uh, same situation. You know, when Stern, like I said, when Stern went over to Sirius, uh, Sirius and, and XM weren't really that big, and uh, they brought he brought everybody there with him. And the same way for Opie and Anthony did the same thing when they went to XM. They brought their their group with them. So, and that's one thing too. Uh, a lot of people don't realize is, is about not just about Opie and Anthony, but Stern and uh, a lot of those guys. You know, they they have the, the loyal listener base, which is what you need when you're really building uh, building out a platform like that. So, uh, some other things going on in tech as as well. First of all, I want to say one thing uh, before we move on to some of the things I want to talk about in tech. You know, uh, big. Uh, it's amazing all, all these people that are uh, all the, these big name actors that are uh, just uh, dying the last last two weeks. Oh my goodness, it's been unbelievable. You have, uh, geez, uh, Celine Dion's husband. He passed away the other day. Obviously, old news now. But uh, you had obviously Alan Rick- Alan Rickman. Uh, for those of you that remember, he was Hans Gruber. And uh, Die Hard, he was also as well in all uh, the Harry Potter movies. Uh, and by the way, folks, I know I'm going to get no, no hate mail here, but I have not seen any of the Harry Potter movies. So for any of you out there that are telling me to hand in my geek license, I, I have not seen it. So there's no reason to go all a wall on me. Uh, you know, I, I have not seen it. So uh, you know, I- I'm going to get around to watching the Harry Potter movies, but I just haven't. Uh, but I will. But, uh, you know, it, it's, um, he was a wonderful actor. Uh, like I said, uh, so many big, obviously, Galaxy Quest with Tim Allen, obviously one of my favorites there. Uh, so he, he made a lot of big movies. 
you know, uh, obviously, uh, Nat King Cole's uh, daughter obviously passed away. Uh, geez, just, just to name a few people that have actually went ahead and, and passed away. I'm trying to think of anybody else I can think of. I think that's going to be it. I can't think of anybody else. There's, but there's a bunch of people that passed away. Uh, Gra- Grizzly Adams, I say he passed away. Uh, you know, the list of, of famous people that have passed away, it just goes on and on and on and on. And uh, so it's, it's pretty insane. Obviously, a gentleman from Motorhead. Uh, they passed away, you know, David Bowie, uh, you know, just, just the list of people that are just passing away is just, it's, it's growing up pretty darn extensive. So, uh, if you're famous and you're listening to this, that's awesome. Uh, but, <laughs> but, um, like I said, uh, you know, if you're listening to this and you are famous, uh, be careful out there. So, you know, it, it's really amazing, uh, you know, how, 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 just how many people are passing. It's unbelievable. So, uh, a couple of things we'll talk about as far as geek news goes, and then I will go ahead and I uh, get to the news. So, uh, on the 20th, apparently, I believe it's the 20th of January, uh, obviously Arrow will be returning. But apparently, they're saying that for, from, what I, from what I can see from the trailer, if you have not seen it yet, you may want to go ahead and watch it. From what I can see from the trailer, uh, it looks like apparently that Felicity now is going to be uh, wheelchair bound, so that's going to be something to watch. Uh, also, too, uh, Flash coming back, and I have to tell you, I, I like, I, you know, I have to, I, and you guys know from listening to me on the other podcasts, I've done Grolix and uh, a couple of those guys. Uh, you know, I, I, I like Flash, but it's not Arrow. Let's put it that way. Uh, but one of the things I'm looking forward to is to superheroes uh, of tomorrow that's coming out. Uh, apparently, that's something. That's going to be a new series that's coming out. Obviously, Wentworth Miller and those you obviously know him uh, from Prison Break, obviously, and obviously he's also from uh, obviously Flash. He plays Captain Cold and Flash. Uh, he's on there as well, and a lot of the a lot of other big name actors are going to be uh, are going to be on there. But I'm really looking forward to that. Superheroes of Tomorrow looks really really good. I can't wait to actually watch that, and then obviously as well. Uh, news just broke recently. Recently, recently, uh, obviously about uh, Prison Break. Prison Break coming back for another season. So uh, Prison Break coming back to Fox again. And apparently, for those of you that have spoiler alert, uh, for those of you that have actually went ahead and seen Prison Break, uh, the one that was direct DVD finale. Uh, apparently, they're going to bring Michael Co- Michael Schofield back somehow. We don't know how yet, but uh, they are going to bring him back. So, and Wentworth Miller has already said it's not going to affect his Flash superheroes of tomorrow schedule at all. So, um, curious to see what happens with that. It'll be interesting to see. And like I said, I'm excited to have I'm excited that Prison Break coming back. Uh, you know, we have obviously we have the you know Walking Dead comes back next month, uh, obviously. And uh, we're looking forward uh, to that. Obviously, Maggie pregnant. Obviously, uh, the wall coming down, falling down at the end. Uh, it looks like it's going to be some kind of major battle. Don't know. Don't have any insider information yet on that. But it looks like we could have a pretty uh, good second half of the season. The first, I have to say, this season I'm actually pretty stoked about. I was a little bit hesitant, uh, you know, with. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Lie. I didn't. There, there were there were some seasons I didn't particularly care of, of Walking Dead, but this season um, has been really, really good. I'm really enjoying the season. So, uh, like I said, we you know I'm, I'm going to definitely be watching it when it comes back on. It's been really, really good. Um, something else I've been watching too. Not sure if anybody else is interested in it. Uh, I've been watching the Blacklist. Uh, those of you that don't watch it, it stars I believe David Spader is it. Uh, it starts him uh, about him being a, uh, a kind of uh, an international criminal, and he works with the FBI to take down some of the big name guys. Uh, I know everybody's like, "Oh, there's been a million shows like that," and there has been, uh, but this particular show is actually really good. Uh, it, it, it's it, it focuses more around the whole thing with you know uh, the internet. It focuses more about the criminal. Then it does actually focus on the actual uh, FBI, so it actually is really good. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, Bosch, uh, who which is which is a Netflix original series, 
uh, is coming back as well next month. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Bosch is, is by Michael Connelly. Uh, he's a really, really huge name actor. Uh, Bosch is really one of the flagship shows for the Amazon Prime TV series. So that's been uh, you know, a really, really huge thing right now. Uh, Bosch has been really huge for Michael, for Michael Connelly, obviously the author, and as well as for Amazon Prime. So that's been a really, really big thing. It's been like the flagship show for them, and that apparently is making a comeback in February. Uh, a very, I'm going to tell you this: if, if you're if you're a parent listening, it's not a family friendly show. Let's put it that way. Uh, it's very adultish. Something I wouldn't let my child watch. But like I said, it it definitely is going to be. It's coming back. It's going to be really good. The trailer looks amazing. Uh, you take that, like I said, in Amazon Prime, and uh, you have to be an Amazon Prime member to watch it. Uh, if you want to watch it legally, it doesn't mean anything, anything bootleggable nowadays. But uh, like I said, you can go ahead and, and watch that. That's actually a really good show, like I said, on Amazon Prime. And so the other thing is that they're going to be – Amazon's got as well. They have another series that's out right now uh, with the gentleman from uh, Sons of Anarchy. He played Hellboy. Uh, he's got a series as well now out on – uh, Amazon Prime as well. That looks that is really really good. So I really like that. So something else, something else I wanted to wanted to talk about either. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, the funny thing is I, I don't I don't listen to an enormous of a, a, an enormous amount of uh, country music. But the other day I just happened to be listening. Uh, I just happened to hear some of this Carrie, some of the Kim Carrie Underwood's music. And. Uh, one thing I want to know is, is I was listening to that song, I guess it was the first major hit after Idol, is I guess I'm, I know you people are going to, although a lot of people are going to say, well, you're, you're way, way, way behind on this, and you're probably right, I am. Uh, but one of the things that I, that I thought was interesting was I was watching that, that listening to that uh, Before She Cheats song that she did after she got off of American Idol, where she talks about beating her, uh, her uh, boyfriend, whoever he is, truck up with a bat, and she has another song, Before He Cheats, um... Undo it. Yeah, I know. One thing I noticed is, is all her music is based around guys being really horrible to her. And I know she's married to a hockey player. Nothing against that. You know, nothing against hockey or anything like that. I kind of like hockey. But, uh, you know, I noticed that a lot of her songs are based around, you know, guys being just overly idiots to her. And I noticed that the other day. It kind of annoyed me a little bit. Like, like, like not all guys are like that. But, but these country songs that she's putting out. You know, they, they're good. I mean, I mean, they're catchy. Like Cowboy Casanova. And some of those songs I was listening to, I got a whole list, a couple of lists of them I listened to. Something in the Water wasn't really... That was a number. That was a big hit for her, but that wasn't anything that really would... And a negative reflection on men. But, you know, like, like Before He Cheats, Don't Even Know My Last Name. Uh, geez, there's Cowboy Casanova. Uh, just a list of a hand, undo it. Uh, just, just a handful of songs I was listening to by her, and they all have to be to do with these pe- guys being just horrible people to her. Really depressing, especially for men. I stand up for all men when I say we're well, not all like that. Yeah, we all aren't like that. So, Carrie, step, stop. You're making us all out to be miserable people. Okay, we're not all like that. Okay, come on, come out with something different. Okay, we're not all like that. So yeah, that, that kind of annoyed me the other day. I had to get that off my chest. That really bothered me. I don't listen to country music that much. So, so it's just my fault for actually listening to music like that once in a while. But you know what What annoys me is, you know, they say all the time, you know, about the certain music that, like, like Miley Cyrus twerking, like, like obviously gets a lot of internet media streaming attention. And I get that, okay? But yet she can put out lyrics like this about men being horrible and reflecting negative on men and, and not getting any heat at all. Just shows you where the press is putting their time these days. So, yeah, that's my rant on that's my that's my my weekly rant on that. So, some other stuff as well. I want to talk about covered era. We covered we covered all that. Uh, obviously, Gotham going to be coming back very soon. Uh, probably, she's. I'm guessing. I, I don't know when it's coming back, but whenever Fox brings their stuff, I mean, it's going to be soon because Fox usually brings stuff back pretty early. So we have that. And then obviously we've talked about the we have to go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. Obviously, Star Wars. You know, a lot of people liked it. I liked it. Uh, they they go in a whole different direction <laughs> uh, than they've ever went before with it. Um, not exactly sure if I I, I I like the direction they took with it, but I'm not sure yet. Let me put it that way. 
like I said, I, I like the direction they're going with it, but I just don't know yet. Um, the next movie was show more. I didn't particularly like the fact that the guy who's pretty much the main character in every book and every movie, except for like three, uh, was in it for all of ten seconds at the end and didn't even really have any lines. So I'm not overly thrilled about that part. Of, like I, I like Star Wars, but I don't like the fact that the main character, who's been the main character for pretty much ever, um, you know, isn't the main. You know, is is like is only in it for like ten seconds. I'm not overly thrilled about that yet, but I have mixed feelings about it. You know, I think it's a great. I think it's awesome. I like the fact that they're putting uh, an emphasis on a female character now as the main character. I like that. I really, really do. I like the fact that that she's also got the Millennium Falcon back. (sighs) I do like the fact they killed Han. No. But again, Harrison Ford obviously is getting older now, and obviously they want to pass the torch so they can, you know, bring the series, you know, they they got to, you know, obviously they have to bring the, you know, the series, you know, they have to, you know, obviously the, the original characters are all getting much older, so they have to push it over to the next group of people, which is uh, the people that they're bringing in. So I, I get it. I really do. But I'm not too happy with the fact that they killed off Han. But that's just my personal. They didn't need to do that. They didn't. But like I said, I mean, I didn't like the fact either that Luke wasn't. I mean, obviously he'll have a big spot, obviously, in the one that's coming out this, obviously this, this year. Uh, December of 2016, but I wasn't, I'm not overly thrilled that they, they killed him off like that. It just didn't seem like it was, I don't know. I didn't like the fact they killed Han. I didn't like the fact that Luke didn't have any lines, but I do like Harrison Ford's part he played in this current movie. I think he played a really good part in this one. I like how they brought Carrie Fisher back, and I like a lot of the stuff they are doing with it, but I'm not. They killed Han! You don't kill Han! Han Solo is one of the greatest captains of all time. You know, and his own son kills him too, which to boost I wasn't overly thrilled about. So yeah, I, I don't know. I I, I like I didn't like the fact that there's no Luke. Where's Luke? You know, and, you know, and I think I think JJ really teased us all into it because you heard Luke. You know, in the the opening. You know, in all the you heard the, the force is strong in my family. It'll be strong with your family too. You know, we heard all that. You know, and I think we were all expecting to come out and say, "Hey, Luke! Yay, Luke! No, Luke! No, Luke! Nothing!" I mean, we didn't even see Harrison Ford till like twenty-five minutes into the movie. The first—I mean, I—I I just think that they teased a little too much and didn't should have put more into it. Like, I understand they had they teased, but I think that they could have. If you're going to tease that much, you have to have the character, and I think that. You know, a lot of people left the theater saying, you know, why was Luke? a lot of people I know that went to it were like, I didn't like the fact that Luke was only in it for like five minutes at the end. And I agree with you. I didn't like that either. So I think a little bit of a mistake on J.J.'s part, a little bit of a mistake on Disney's part, but I'm sure the next movie they'll make up for it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I, I, I know the next movie is going to be better. I love, I cannot wait to see the Young Han Solo series when that comes out. That's going to be definitely huge. Um... You know, I mean, I think, I mean, Mar- I mean, I think they said that, what is it? They've got Star Wars movies lined up for the next, what? I think this is the next, like, like I think five or six years. So, I mean, that's definitely awesome. So we're going to get our, definitely our fill of Star Wars uh, over the next, you know, year or so. Over the next couple of years, I should say, the next five years. But I just think that they, they, I just think that this movie, as great as it was, did leave a little bit of disappointment. That's just my feeling. So, uh, on to tech stuff. So, we, we, you know, I, I got to talk about tech, obviously, because this is the Technology Geek Podcast. And this is, obviously, we talk about technology, geek, uh, all the stuff that relates to technology and geek in this world. But uh, a couple things. So, uh, to start off, I guess, uh, I, have, I got a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I bought myself a Raspberry Pi for Christmas. And uh, I'm going to talk about that probably in, in more detail uh, you know, probably the you know next podcast. I'm gonna say that that'll be a whole podcast as well. But I got that for Christmas, so that's gonna probably be in the next podcast. We'll be talking about my my Raspberry Pi experience. Uh, some other things too that goes kind of cool. Um, not that I'm I'm an expert in, in mechanics from that, but um, you know, one of the things is my my dad has a has a lift chair, and one of the things I thought that was really neat was that uh, he was having a problem with the remote. 
And me being a tech person, being somebody that works in tech for a living, and being on somebody that does a lot of tech reviews and podcasting and all that kind of stuff, I said, let you go ahead and they said, well, let me take this, this remote apart for his lift chairs that he uses. And I took it apart, and the funny thing was, uh, it was one wire that got broken off the board. So I unsoldered it using my soldering iron and, uh, you know, removed all the solder. And then I took the wire, stripped it, and resoldered it back onto the remote, and boom. You know, my dad was back in business within like a half hour or so. So just for curious, I called up the medical supply house uh, down the street from us here to actually see how much a new remote would cost in case that didn't hold. And then we get $125 for a remote for a... You know, for a lift chair. And I know the med- everything in the medical industry obviously is way overpriced. We know that. But, uh, you know, it was pretty intense. I mean, uh, you know, $125 for something that took me five minutes to fix and maybe cost me a, p- a couple pennies of solder. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So for those of you out there that are listening to this show that you – know, I know you guys hear me talk about – you know, pot, you know, you guys hear me talking a lot in the podcast about, you know, ham radio, electronics – and all that kind of stuff, and um, I talk about hardware quite a bit too. And I know I, I get a, I get I do get quite a few tweets from people saying, you know, you talk, you know, last week you talked about you know soldering and ham radio and stuff like that, and and not all of it is all related to to ham radio and all that. I know that, but um, you know, one thing I have to learn is one thing I have to say is is if, if you can learn a little bit about electronics and how to solder and actually how to to take stuff apart. And learn how to read a mother, learn how to read a board, and learn how basic, you know, ele- vo- electronic voltage works. You can save yourself quite a ton of cash as far as repairs. Um, you know, I'm just recently, you know, we had an issue with the remote not working on uh, our TV, and I took it apart, and I found that there was a, uh, you know, one of the little, uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of it now. One of the little, I think it was the, I think it was, a, I don't want to say it was a diode, but one of the little, it popped. And I went and got, a, I went and I had another one in my little electronics kit I had laying around here, and I unsolded it, restarted it. And we never had the same remote. Now, so everybody's like, "Is it worth the trouble?" Well, you know what, thirty dollars for a remote, to, to, you know, or twenty dollars for a remote. You know, to me, it's twenty dollars I have to spend when I only spend a few cents on something. So, uh, one of the things I really want to, you know, we talk about soldering a lot, we talk about electronics a lot on this show. Uh, which, you know, and, and we talk about programming and stuff like that, obviously, quite often. But, you know, a lot of people always email me and say, why don't you talk more about software? You always talk about hardware. Well, I, I mean, I mean, I do know how to program. I'm pretty sufficient in, in Visual Basic. I'm pretty, you know, sufficient in Python. Uh, you know, I'm pretty good in SQL and all that. But, um, you know, one of the, a lot of things that people don't realize is is hardware and you know, soldering and, and hardware and stuff is, is really a something that still is... Uh, really something that, that it's not it's still not going to go away it's still going to be something that's very useful um, you know a while back I, I replaced this phone on my friend's uh, screen on my friend's iPhone you know and everybody's like well did he get the insurance well yeah but it's $100 for the insurance the screen itself is only $20 and just you know half hour of my time to fix it so you know I, hardware is something that's as long as we have tech out there we're always going to need electronics people and we're always going to need people that know how to work with hardware and, you know, I know maybe computer repair isn't what it used to be t- 10 years ago, but I still think that we're going to need people that know how to how to do hardware stuff. Soldering is still a very valuable skill. And actually, honestly, I think soldering is going to be something more prevalent. You're going to see more people learn how to do it in the next 5, 10 years because more things are, be, more things are, are you know, disposable. And you're going to need to know how to open them up and to take remove old solder and put new solder on. So I think it's a skill that definitely is... If you're in computers at all, it's not a hard thing to learn either. It's a cheap thing. You go get a soldering iron and a starter kit, practice soldering kit for like 30 bucks from your local Radio Shack. And uh, like I said, it definitely is a good skill to learn. I I, I would recommend anybody that's going to go into computers learn how to solder because it, it is something that's going to be useful down the road to you. So talking, since we're talking about tech, uh, I always get tech usually from for, for Christmas. I usually get a lot of tech for Christmas. Actually, that's my main Christmas gift I usually ask for. Uh, one, because I like it, and two, because it gives me something to talk about on the show. Uh, so I actually went ahead and I got a an Amazon Echo. My wife got it for me for Christmas. Uh, so a couple things about this. Uh, one thing that I, that I didn't know about the Amazon Echo is it's always listening. And so it does have a lot of speakers, does have a lot of, uh, it's pretty neat. I mean, I mean, we, I, I run music through it all the time and, uh, it, it sounds amazing. I love it. Uh, the, the speaker quality, the sound quality on it's really cool. 
Uh, setting it up isn't difficult. You set it up through an app on your iPhone, just like you would set up a Chromecast uh, or anything like that. So it was fairly easy to go ahead and, and get set up. I thought that was pretty simple. Uh, some of the features on it, uh, you know, obviously you can ask it. Uh, I mean, just standard stuff off the shelf that you would expect from Amazon. Obviously, you, if you have a Prime, after you, you pro- I mean, to get this to work, you need a Prime account uh, to obviously get it to work best, I should say. But, you know, like I said, you can actually go ahead and, and you, you open up the Alexa. You can have it. You have to say the word Alexa and then the command uh, to get it to work. But, um, you know, yeah, I, obviously, first thing I can tell you is it, it'll play any 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 music that's in the Amazon Music Library. It'll play for you. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It doesn't it doesn't have uh, Amazon Music doesn't have the greatest selection yet. But if you want to just have it play something, you can do that. Uh, one of the things I've done on it is I've actually the, the thing that I've really enjoyed about it is like you can say the name and then like Alexa and then you can actually say you know what you want it to do. So um, for me, I, for me, I use it to play. I'll actually ask it to play a lot of my my audible books because I like to listen to audio books. So I have it play a lot of my audio books all the time for me. So that's a lot of fun. Um, if you're into audio books, it definitely is great for that. Obviously, Audible is owned by Amazon. So, obviously, it integrates well with that feature. So, obviously, you can have it do that. You can have it play uh, TuneIn. So, a lot of times, I'll say, you know, play, you know, uh, you know, Twit live stream. And it'll play the live stream for anything that's on TuneIn. It'll play uh, any of the music. It'll play any of your music library that you have on Pandora. So, if you wanted to say something, you'll say, hey, you know, play... You know, Nickelback, and it'll go ahead and it'll, it'll play. You know, you know, your Pandora library. You know, play anything off any of the streams. It'll play off TuneIn. Any of music, it'll play off iHeartRadio. I wanted to play like like six eight like the like Nikki Six has a show on iHeartRadio. On oh, the Sixth Sense, you just say, "Hey, play the Sixth Sense on iHeartRadio," and it actually go ahead and play it for you. So that's that's pretty that's pretty cool. I like it for that. Uh, and also, it will pair with your phone. So if you want it to pair, you just say, hey, pair, and it'll pair with your phone. And then you can play any music you have on Spotify because it doesn't integrate with Spotify yet. It doesn't integrate with iTunes or anything like that. So, uh, But you can you can you know pair it. But I have to tell you, though, that if you, if you are thinking about pairing it for music, the, it does have – I mean the speaker itself has got really, is really good quality. So I recommend that. So like I said, if, if you really, really want a good sounding speaker – uh, it, it definitely is that. It'll give you good quality music. Uh, some of the other features I like about it, uh, first of all, obviously, you can add a to-do list. You can say, hey, you know, add milk to my grocery list. Now, since ours is downstairs uh, in my office here, uh, we're able to actually do that. So we'll actually say, hey, you know, Alexa, you know, Alexa add you know, milk to the grocery list, and we'll actually go ahead and do it. Um, so that's cool. You can actually have a, uh, to, you have a shopping list. You have a to-do list. Uh, so you can have both. Uh, the shopping list or to-do list. Uh, you can have it set timers for you. So if you say, hey, you know, wake, you know, time, you know, uh, for instance, if you're cooking, like I'll give you friends at my office cooking something the other day, and just say, you know, um, you know, uh, set, you know, set the timer for 20, 30 minutes, and 30 minutes it'll do it. You can also set alarms, so you can say, hey, you know, wake me up, you know, at seven o'clock tomorrow, and it'll go ahead and, and wake you up at seven o'clock. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you know, it does have an, uh, with, uh, it does have a sister app that you actually put on your iPhone too. That's uh, pretty cool. You have, to, you have to download it when you're configuring it, or else it won't configure. Uh, like I said, download any of your Amazon Music Library. So, I mean, what, what's neat about that is if you're somebody like myself that has downloaded quite a bit of music off Amazon, uh, it'll actually go ahead and, and play that. Uh, actually, a friend of mine, he's not into the whole subscription-based music service. He's actually one of those guys that wants to own his music, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and he downloads tons of music off Amazon, and he actually has it, uh, you know, where it's, you know, where it actually, where, where so he has like three, four, five hundred songs in his Amazon library, so it'll play all stuff in his Amazon library. So if you have a lot of your Amazon music downloaded from them, you're in good shape. If you don't like me and you have Spotify, yeah, you, you either have to pair it or you can just play the radio. I mostly use it for playing my, my, my audio books. So it's not a big deal to me because I'm, I'm, I'll am i just say, hey, you know, play my audio book. Um, so it's not a big deal. If I want to listen to music, I'll just have it play something off TuneIn or off Pandora. So for me, it's not a big deal, but for some people it might be so. Uh, one of the things that's neat that they just added uh, the other day, which was kind of neat, uh, if you have Kindle Unlimited now and you have some of those Kindle Unlimited books that uh, also have the audio built into them, uh, I'll actually play that. That's something really new that just came out this past week. 
Oh, they also just added something. I mean, I get emails, I think, almost every single – once a week I get an email with everything they've added to the device. Uh, they just added the NASDAQ now so you can say, hey, you know, you know, what does the NASDAQ look like today? And I'll give you the update on that. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, some other things as well you can do with it that I found. You can have give it. You can put in your zip code and you can say, you know, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Uh, so I can actually do that right now, you know, and, and ask it what the weather will be like and it'll actually do it. Uh, that's something, that's a feature that, that's pretty neat. Also, too, they just added a feature now where you can modify your news. So say you would, say you would like, you know, say you don't want all the political news, which I, I, I like some of it, but after a while it gets old. So you can go into the settings on the app and say, you know, go into the Alexa news settings and actually take off. But you know what, say like mine is set, like when I see, you know, Alexa, tell me the news, it'll play all the tech news for me, but it won't tell me any of the political news or anything else. So you can actually customize your news settings now, which is something really new that just came out. So that's something that I think is definitely worth having. And I think it's a lot of fun too. So that was something that they just came out with the other day. Uh, you can actually do voice training with it as well. Uh, I haven't, but you can actually do it. Uh, some of the things you can do as well that I haven't done yet. Uh, you, well, I actually have done this. Like, you can go into the traffic section and tell it, you know, and ask it, hey, you know, and you can put a route in that you say you're going to normally take. So, say you say you have the, the route you go to work, or for me, you know, I have the the route in, say for for going to, you know, a friend's house or that, or I, I have like two or three routes in, but you have to know the route number. So, if you can say like, you know, hey, tell me, you know, traffic for route one, it'll say, oh, you know, that was an accident on so and so, or hey, the road, or hey, things are clear, or it'll say, hey, you know, the weather isn't looking too good, you might want to be careful traveling that route, uh, so that's kind of cool, uh, there's a calendar option now, you can link it up to your Google calendar, you can link it up with, uh, holidays, uh, in the U.S., birthdays, uh, you know, all that stuff, so if you put something, you know, what it can do is, I can walk in in the morning and be, hey, Alec, you know, Alexa, what's my calendar for the day, and she'll go ahead and give me my calendar for the day, so... Uh, that's kind of fun. You have that Google Calendar. It doesn't sync with Outlook Calendar or anything like that. So, uh, some of the other things it does too, uh, connected home, which I haven't done much with, but, uh, it, it integrates with Wink, smart things, and stuff like that. So, you can have it say, hey, you know, you know, turn on my light if, as long as you have, well, you have to have, you have to have one of those, like, you have to have like a Wink light switch. Or you have to have like a smart thing thermostat and all that. So that there's there's things you can do with it uh, as far as in home automation, which is really awesome. Uh, but I don't have them set up just yet. Uh, Vircaso, I still, I'm still using Vircaso right now, and I know that Steve was saying that's going way of the birds. So one of the things I like to do is I would actually like to eventually get the light switches and hook them up to Alexa. But let me tell you, one thing that's really neat about this is uh, is you can actually go ahead. And like, and actually, like I said, automate the home so it'll turn on certain rooms. You have to name all the rooms on. So there's a lot of there is a lot of legwork you have to do with that, but it does work. So uh, one of the things you can do is um, you can actually link up, which I have not done it just because I don't want to. Uh, but there's actually a voice purchasing where you can actually tell it to person that she purchases it off Amazon for you. So you can say, hey, it's just like the Amazon Prime buttons. That they were that Amazon has out for Tide and a lot of those other products. You can actually go ahead and say, "Hey, order me Tide," and I'll actually order it. And since you have Prime, it'll show up on your doorstep. But you have to have like a preferred payment and a preferred route set up. But uh, other thing you can do too, you can do a sports update, which I do not have set up, but you could actually do sports updates with it. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, I haven't yet. But uh, you could, if you wanted to, set up your favorite team. You say, hey, you know, have the sports, and I'll tell you. You know, if you have a baseball team in there, obviously it's winter time. Say, hey, baseball's not in season right now or something like that. But if you have it set up to do basketball or football or something like that, it'll tell you who, you know, when the next game is and what the score was of the last game. So uh, some other things as well you can do with it. Uh, they actually added a change user feature now. So... Uh, say my wife wants to add stuff to say her grocery list, uh, she can actually say, you know, change user and it'll actually change user and it'll change to her user. So that could be kind of neat. Um, like I said, I haven't really messed with that too much. Uh, one of the things it does do is you can actually, it actually gives you a history of everything ever asked of it. So that's kind of neat. Uh, one of the things I learned as well with this is that it not only does it actually, it, it obviously has to obviously be on the internet. Uh, to work properly, but one of the things too is if if you don't talk to it for a while, um, 
it will actually say you're playing. Say you're saying having it play music for you while you're sleeping. Say you fall asleep and it runs for a bunch of hours of a night. It won't get updates. But if you actually let it sit for like a half hour, forty five minutes around midnight, it will actually do updates. And one of the things that that's kind of neat, like I said, I get an email about this thing every week of new features they've added. Like I said, they've added the Nasdaq ticker. They've added all these different stuff. Uh, just this week alone, they've added. Uh, I'm just going to pull up my Echo email for the for this week. Like I said, and every week I get one. New every week it's new this week, new this week. Every I've had like three weeks, and I've gotten like three emails already about it. New this week, new this week. Uh, you know, it's like this one was Kindle Books, but uh, you know, for air, the Echo, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, more to try. They have like a fortune cookie app now. Quick events, uh, which is something for the calendar. They have something coming out for the Super Bowl, Super uh, Super Bowl thing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's, there's math games on there. There's poker games they just added recently. Uh, there, there's a ton of neat stuff you can add. That's just this past week. Um, you know, the week before. Uh, you know, you can actually, there's actually a Jeopardy game that actually they actually just added the other day. Uh, they added some more features now for Audible. Obviously, you can do like next chapter or go to chapter three or something. Like that. I mean, obviously, normally the 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 book part picks up right where we left off in the last book. So. You know, but you can actually, but they also added some stuff too. You can actually say, hey, tell me a joke and I'll tell you a n- joke. It actually does get even more specific. You can say, hey, tell me, you know, a knock knock joke and I actually tell you just a knock knock joke. So that's kind of name. Uh, there's stuff on there you can say, you know, tell me about the, 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 the Democratic Trail. Uh, you can say, you know, now, tell me about the new Amazon Prime series. They just added that. So, you know, they're, they're always, they're always adding stuff to this. You know, they added, uh, like, a seven-minute workout the other day. That was a new feature they just added. Uh, you know, have, have her work with you on a, have Alexa work with you on a seven-minute workout. So there's, there's a lot of stuff they added. They, they add stuff, like, almost every week. So uh, it's actually worth getting an email just to know what's going on. So some other stuff I've been tinkering around with, with... Um, in, in relates to to apps, let's say, on uh, the app market, uh, one of the things I've been tinkering around with is uh, Amazon. The the not only the uh, I was messing around my Amazon Echo and, and it led me to to some of this because I was doing the shopping list. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what else you know certain things do. So I started messing around with some apps, and um, one of the things I started messing around with was uh, the the wallet feature on the iPhone. And one of the things I found with the wallet is that there's it it does a lot of great stuff. But there's also a lot of stuff that's limited with two, by the way, and I didn't know this. So uh, to give you a prime example, like there are certain things you can get for the wallet that you can't get. Like you can't get like the rewards card for like my gas and stuff like that, that I have through Sunoco. There's no app for that. There's no wallet for that. And I scanned twice, scanned the thing on the back, and it wouldn't work. Um, so that was kind of neat. But one of the things I did tinker around with is the Dunkin' Donuts uh, Perks app. And if you're Dunkin' Donuts goer, uh, like me, we don't really have Starbucks. To, we don't really have too many Starbucks around here. And the one we do is, is kind of out of the way from any of the direction I go. But um, what's really neat about that is you can actually, like I said, you, you have to buy like a prepaid card. So it's not like you can just hook it up and every time you buy a coffee, it actually hits your phone. It doesn't work that or hits your debit card. You actually have to buy a card, say with um, – like you actually buy like a $25 card. And what it does, and every time you go there, you can't, you can just bring up the app, and they just hit it with the barcode scanner, and it takes the um, the money right off. So it's not taking your debit card every time, obviously, because you know it, you're buying like a prepaid card. But one of the things that's interesting about it is that they give you points and perks and rewards to keep coming back, which I thought that was pretty interesting. So for those of you out there that are you know, often Dunkin' Donuts goers. Uh, obviously, the Dunkin' Donuts Perks app. I strongly recommend it. It tells you what stores you're at. But what's other neat is after you get a certain amount of points, you get free coffee. And then the other thing, too, is after you hit a certain amount, they, they give you free coupons all the time on the apps you can use. So, like, the other day, I got, like, a 99-cent coffee. Even though I didn't get all, I didn't use all my – I didn't get to, like, the amount of points I needed for the next thing I wanted. Um, I was able to actually go ahead and get a free coffee anyway. So, they give away a lot of stuff and stuff. So, it's actually pretty, pretty neat. Uh, it actually is worth – taking your time to actually go and try it uh, for those of you that uh, are big Dunkin' Donuts goers. So I've messed around that, but there is a there is a thing in there too to actually go ahead and create a, uh, create a card. So I went ahead and I created the card. Now that's in my wallet. Uh, one of the things I thought was kind of interesting was uh, CVS, the local CVS. I've actually used them, you know, for my medication and stuff like that, but, um, you know, you got a cold or something like that. You got to get an antibiotic. But, um, 
one of the things neat about that is uh, once you actually create an account, you can you can actually actually obviously manage your all that stuff, uh, you know, right through the app. You know, if you need to refill a prescription or something like that. But I don't really do anything like that. But uh, you could. But one of the things that need is you actually could give your rewards card link to it now, so you can actually do that. Hit create rewards card and actually create a rewards card in your wallet, and you just pick it up and just hand it to the lady over the counter. She, you know, hits it and that's it. So I, I'm going to say that I think probably in the next five years, the the, you, the days of of carrying your keychain with all those little little badges that you used to have to hand and did. Did remember you guys remember those things? I think the days of those are going to be gone. Uh, AAA app as well. I created a wallet uh, that has a wallet app as well for Apple. So I actually went ahead and uh, created that as well. So uh, we're working on that as well. Uh, Home Depot has the same thing as well. I, I, me- I have messed around with one. Subway has a, a wallet app. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Staples has one. Sub- I said Subway already, but... Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of neat stuff uh, happening with these with these reward cards, and if you don't have them, you definitely should should tinker around them. Uh, Rite Aid has one now. Um, Jesus, there's so many different different ones. I'm just going through. Obviously, Starbucks has one. That's obvious, but um, you know, but I mean, you can scan the cards. But there's, you really should tinker around with this if you have it because it actually is really really handy. That Google has their own wallet as well. Uh, Target, obviously, we have a Target card, so we actually use that one as well. Um, you know, Discover has one. There's quite a few. There's all different kinds. Uh, but like I said, it's something you should definitely look into. Fandango has one if you want. I think that's pretty neat. Um, I haven't tried the Fandango one just yet, but I'm going to. And the Live Nation one looks like it could be a lot of fun, too. I'm thinking about those two. I'm probably going to download and use as well, so... But yeah, those are uh, all those apps are a lot of fun. You definitely should look into it, especially if you're somebody like me who's carrying around so many freaking cards in our wallets. Uh, it can definitely help you cut down quite a bit on that. So it's actually something to definitely try. I have not tried Apple Pay yet, um, but it definitely is worth it. One of the things you should try too is if you're somebody that take credit cards for your business, you can actually use Square. Actually, go ahead and actually try using Square. And uh, that's a lot of fun as well to use. And uh, tr- so, I mean, if you take credit cards, because one of the other problems we're going to have with the new credit card system is you're going to have to be able to take Apple Pay. So you're going to have to have a thing where somebody could touch their phone to this, this little square box and it actually goes ahead and takes the Apple Pay. So uh, that's a lot of fun uh, to tinker around with as well if you haven't. So uh, I think that's going to be about it I had on the the run sheet this week for the Technology Geek podcast. Uh, some of the other things, folks, I just want to point out, too. I know we haven't really been doing podcasting as much just because I've been on the road with, with book signings and, and so many other things. And uh, and I do apologize. It's been a couple months since we did one, but we're not going to be – we're going to try to get back into our regular routine again. Uh, you know, we have a ton of loyal listeners, and, and you guys have been always been uh, very loyal to me and, and always, you know, uh, you, you guys have been with me since I started the, the podcast years ago, and, and everybody's always – always just so ridiculously supportive when I miss a few weeks and all that and everybody doesn't care about uh, you guys are some of the best listeners out there and you, you've always been loyal to me and all that so I do appreciate that uh, but like I said one of the other things too I'm actually looking at is um, now that my wife and I have actually moved um, we actually do have I still have um, some office space available at um, at another location at one of my, at, uh, one of my rental homes. I'm actually thinking about turning that office space. I'm actually thinking about turning it into like a podcasting studio and, uh, and obviously starting like the whole like tech geek podcasting network. Um, obviously pipe dream, baby steps, but, uh, that would be a lot of fun to actually have my own podcasting studio and I can do shows right from there. And then what I was thinking about too, I could even like rent the space out to other podcasters and radio shows. Uh, I've said, I've said a lot about podcasting and radios and, and radio and all that, but I was thinking about even possibly, you know, using it for not only for my own podcast and maybe to spin up some more podcasts, but actually starting up the whole, like a whole network and even renting that space out to other other radio shows and, and stuff of that. I've, I've actually been looking into doing that since I've got that spare space and the space has just been sitting there. It hasn't really been used and renting it has been kind of tough. Cause this is a small space, but it's, it's big, be big enough for like a, like a studio and it has that, that wall that's like a, so you can actually have like a soundproof. So as you, you put it up and nobody can, you know, the soundproof room and stuff of that and, um, or soundproofing, I should say anyway, but, uh, there's a lot of, it, it's got a lot of potential. They can actually use it, you know, it could actually be like, you know, like our own, 
like uh, my own little studio there. I've, I've got, my, I've actually right now I've got my guitars there and I've got some amps there and a bunch of recording equipment and stuff that I don't really use. I was thinking about setting it up and having like the the tech geek, um, you know, studios or something like that. I was actually thinking, I was thinking about a friend of mine wanted to spin up his own podcast too and use the space because he never really have a space to record and then. I was thinking about too maybe renting the space out or using it maybe to have guests and stuff like that when I have guests on the show and stuff like that. So uh, a lot of potential there, but you know, baby steps. It's something I'm thinking about. I'm kicking around that idea. So uh, like I said, I want to thank everybody for listening. I'm sorry that it's been a while, uh, but like I said, I want to thank everybody for listening. And we will see you next week. As always, you can actually go ahead and find all of our podcasts on uh, the technologygeek.org uh, or podcast.technologygeek.org. Either one of those will bring you to the same place. Uh, obviously, as well as Twitter, KB3YUA, my call sign. And on Facebook at uh, TechGeekOrg. And I want, like I said, I want to thank everybody for listening. And uh, we will see you next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>